Okay, so today we're going to be talking about what a mineral is. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to set up your notes. So on a piece of notebook paper in your science binder, you're going to make it look like this. So we're just going to make a chart, if you can see that. And at the top it says, what is a mineral notes? You're going to make a T-chart on the left-hand side. You're going to put characteristics of a mineral, because we'll be talking about five characteristics of a mineral today. And then over on the right-hand side, you're going to put your explanation, your notes, any information that you want to write down about that particular characteristic. All right, let's get started. First of all, um, what is a mineral? A mineral is a building block of a rock. So when you're looking at rocks, they're usually a combination of a bunch of different kinds of minerals. So to be a mineral rather than a rock, it has to meet five specific characteristics. We're going to talk about each one of those five characteristics individually. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the first one is that they're naturally occurring. They're solids. They have a crystal structure, a definite chemical composition, and they're generally considered inorganic. Now, don't feel like you have to get all of those down at once. We're going to go through each one in detail. So the first one. Um, the thing you need to know about a mineral is it has to be a solid. It cannot be a liquid and it cannot be a gas. So, for example, water and oxygen cannot be minerals. Once a mineral or rock has melted, once it's reached its melting point, it's no longer considered a mineral because it has to be a solid. The second characteristic of being naturally occurring means that it cannot be man-made. It has to be formed by the earth, formed by nature. Um, another word for that is synthetic, meaning man-made. So it can't be any kind of synthetic product. Styrofoam and plastic would be examples of things that would not be minerals because they don't meet that characteristic. The third characteristic is minerals generally are considered inorganic. And in this case, inorganic means not living. And it can't be anything that is the remains of living things, that was once living. Anything having to do with living things cannot be part of a mineral. The fourth characteristic is sometimes a hard one for students to get. It's that it has a fixed composition. And what this means is that it's either an element or a compound. Generally, most minerals are compounds. There are a few, like gold, that is an element. But they have the same chemical formula no matter where you find them. So if you find a particular mineral, say halite, in one state and you find another sample of it in another state, it's going to have the same chemical formula. It's not going to be a random different mixture from one sample to another. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to match from one sample to the next. And then our last characteristic of a mineral is that they have a crystal structure or a crystal form. This just means that when the atoms, when the minerals forming, the atoms line up in a certain pattern and that pattern repeats. Sometimes you can see on the outside um, of the mineral what you see. You can see the evidence of that pattern in the shape of a crystal. Some crystals will have a cubic shaped crystal. Some will have a hexagonal shaped crystal. Um, but even if you can't see it in that particular sample, all minerals have a crystal structure, which means their atoms arrange themselves into this repeating pattern. A lot of our samples that we'll look at aren't the greatest samples, so you don't always see that crystal structure. So, a definition that kind of incorporates all five of those characteristics is a mineral is a naturally formed inorganic solid that has a definite chemical composition and a crystal structure. That incorporates all five of those characteristics. Now we're going to practice seeing if we can identify a mineral. Oops, let's go back. Okay, so um, this one already tells us that it is a mineral. Halite, which is sodium chloride, is going to be considered a mineral because it meets all five of those characteristics. Now, what I want you to do is we're going to go through and do a few examples together and I want you to add to your notes. We're going to make another little chart on our notes. So if you need to pause or stop the video to go back to finish the notes on the characteristics of a mineral, 
go ahead and do that. And then what I want you to do is at the bottom of your page, you're going to make a chart that looks like this. So this is our mineral examples chart. And we're just going to, again, make another T chart. On the left-hand side, we'll have our substance. And on the right-hand side, we're going to put if it's a mineral or a non-mineral. And then we're also going to put a little brief explanation about which characteristic does it not meet if it's a non-mineral. So the first one we're going to add to our list for the substance is going to be halite. Halite is NaCl, that's salt. And you can see here, it already tells us with the smiley face that it is a mineral. And so it has, it's a solid. Halite is formed in the earth, in the ground. You might have heard of salt beds. And it also has a crystal structure. You can see that crystal structure. It has a definite chemical composition. You can see here that it, it has a chemical formula of NaCl. No matter where you remove halite from the ground, it's always going to be NaCl. And then also it's inorganic. Halite doesn't contain the remains of living things, and it's not made by living things. It's actually made when water evaporates and leaves the salt that was dissolved in the water behind. All right, our next, how about ice? H2O. So let's add that to our list. Ice for the substance. And ice is going to be a, let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. Not a mineral, excuse me. I was thinking of water. A mineral. Because again, it meets all the characteristics of a mineral. It's naturally occurring, it's inorganic, it's a solid. It has a crystal structure. You can see here in the atoms the crystal structure, and it has a definite chemical composition of H2O. What about liquid water, though? Liquid water, and we can add water to our list, is a non-mineral because it does not meet all five characteristics. Which characteristic does it not meet? Well, one of those is it does not meet the characteristic of being a solid. So we're going to add that to our list. All right, our last one we're going to do together is amber. And amber is um, fossilized tree sap, hardened tree sap. And you can see here that its chemical formula is C10H16O. And so amber is definitely has a definite chemical composition. However, it doesn't have a crystal structure. And more importantly, if you can see this right here, these are the remains of an insect. So oftentimes, amber will contain the remains of living things, so it is not considered inorganic. So amber is not a mineral. And we're going to put on our paper that it is not a mineral because it does not meet the characteristic of being inorganic. So here's what our notes look like so far with our four samples that we did together. Next, you're going to get some samples that you're going to do on your own and bring into class tomorrow. So when you're doing the um, samples on your own, ask yourself these questions. Is it a non-living material? Does the substance contain living things? Is it made from living things? If the answer is yes, it's not a mineral. Is it a solid? It has to be a solid. Is it formed in nature? If it's something man-made, remember, it's not considered a mineral. Does it have a crystal structure? And if you know the chemical composition, that can help you, again, know that it has that set or definite chemical composition. So the next few slides are going to show you some examples. List those substances on the left-hand side. Put whether you think it's a mineral or a non-mineral. If you choose non-mineral, put why. What characteristic does it not meet? Here's the first one, wood. Now I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. You're going to write them down put, if you think it's a mineral, non-mineral, give your explanation. But you can always go back in the video and pause and, and rewind if I go too quickly. All right, the next one is going to be gold, a fossil, topaz, bones, Granite, quartz, pearls, 
towel. Icebergs. Diamond. Coal. Rock salt. So that's our last one. Bring that chart in in your notes. Finish tomorrow and we will be talking about minerals, what makes a mineral, and something a mineral. Also, if you have any questions or things that didn't make sense to you, jot those down in your notes as well. That'll give us some place to start for our conversation about what a mineral is tomorrow. See you then. Bye.